in our previous YouTube video, we created a couple of unique banner effects and image effects using the new Squarespace Fluid Engine. So we've got this blind effect here where we've got this nice cut between the images of one continual image. And the first example we looked at was a standard photo and then a zoomed in area of it to add a bit of texture to the page. Both are nice effects. It's really only scratching the surface of what we can do. What I hadn't planned in the last tutorial is to double this up with a second part. And that's what we're going to be covering today. We're going to be showing how this can adapt better to mobile devices. If you've seen the last one, you'll recall that we have the issues with some of these images not looking right on mobile. That's looking really nice there. But then we've got the other two images being repeated below. So whilst this works fabulously on desktop, it doesn't translate well to mobile. Thankfully, it's a very quick fix, and that's what we're going to be looking at. So I'm going to go back to home and then go to design. And then I'm going to go into the rather scary custom CSS section. The good thing here is that with a couple of little tools, this should be quite easy to work with. So first of all, I'm going to add a media query. This gives the browser with a series of instructions that are for mobile devices only, tablet devices, or even desktop only, depending on the parameters that you set. So I'm going to use a quick shortcut using Text Expander, which is a tool I use for adding in text shortcuts. And this one here has got a max width of 600 pixels, meaning that that's ideal for mobile devices, but tablets in landscape format and desktop would be excluded from these settings. I will try and remember to add this into the description below, but searching for media queries, examples is really easy. Have a quick look on Google and you'll find a load of different options because you can actually target between say max width 600, or you can change that to min width 600 and then a max width as well, so you can target between screen sizes, which is really good. In this case, we're gonna keep it really simple. We're only gonna be targeting mobile view to get it fixed. We could then test it on a iPad or find a tablet that will do the job for testing it to make sure that we don't need to include that screen size as well. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna do is use this Chrome extension that brings up all of the different blocks that are in Squarespace. So this one, I can't remember the name of this one, but if you go to Google Chrome extensions, so if I do a quick search for Chrome extensions, we go to the Chrome web store. search for Squarespace block identifier. We've got one here that would do the job. Good reviews. And I'm pretty sure that's the one or very similar to the one I've got. Have a look around, find something that works for you. But all we're after really is just to identify some of these blocks that we're going to hide. So I'm going to select the first one here. So we want to keep this image here, but not this one. By clicking on that block, it copies it. And all I'm gonna do now is Control V, paste that within these brackets here on this media query. So we need to do a couple of things here. We need to add some curly brackets. So if you add the first one, it should add the second closing bracket automatically. And it's really important that we type the next bit inside in between those brackets. If you're new to any sort of CSS or coding, then this may look a little bit scary to start with, but just follow the steps and you'll be fine. Don't necessarily need to add an important tag, but I'm going to just to be on the safe side. So there we go. So I've added display none important to remove that image from the display. The spacing's still there, so we may have to do some follow-up 
tweaks to reduce that spacing afterwards. But what I'm hoping is by the time we've saved it, that should work as expected when we refresh it. It certainly did on the former version of Squarespace. I don't know if there's any change now with the fluid engine. Repeating it now with the second and third. So that's one way where we can list them above each other, but because the command's gonna be exactly the same, what we can do is just put a comma between each of the blocks and then paste the three blocks. So what we're doing here is targeting all three blocks in one go. So we've got block one, two, and three now with that same effect. We can get rid of that previous one and that just tidies up the code a little bit. If I click on this toggle at the top here again, we can see now that we've got two images in. Now, obviously we would only be using one of these two banners as opposed to both. If I go back to desktop, I'll save those settings first. We can see that the desktop should be unchanged. And then if we switch back to mobile. Okay, so full disclosure, I hit a block last time at recording, so I had to stop it, fix the problem, and then jump back in. So that's where we are now. The problem was on the new Fluid Engine, by removing or hiding blocks by adding the display none attribute, hasn't actually removed the block from the editor. Whilst in former versions of Squarespace, this space would have cleared up and moved up above. I found a fix, although I'm not overly happy with it because it's a bit of a blatant hack, where what I'm gonna do is click and drag the images over top of the one above. Because it's empty now, we're not gonna have any visual issues. And then we drag up the section to meet it. Same again with the sections above. So for some reason, I only need to move one of those images and then it will allow us to, to reduce the spacing accordingly. So that's, dare I say it, the fix. If I press save now, we can now see that we've got much better spacing throughout, which we couldn't get previously by just using the hide effect alone. Now's the acid test. Is it gonna work as expected on desktop? There's no reason why it shouldn't. And as we can see, those images are appearing exactly as they should on desktop. Not perfect. And I'm certainly gonna have a look at seeing if there's a neater, better way of making those adjustments via code. So it's not just loading up an empty container shell overlaying a photo. Maybe on some more skewer browsers it may throw out some issues and some more investigations needed but we've achieved what we set out to at the start of this tutorial hope you find this helpful check out our full course on the squarespace fluid engine if you're looking to get up and running with it and we're looking to be creating a wide variety of fluid engine based tutorials over the coming weeks enjoy <laughs>